Hi, Cassandra. I'm so glad to see you. I've missed you so much. I missed you too, Sarah. Hi. When was the last time you've been on and why has it been so long? <laughs> you know, it might have been right before the holidays and then we all probably just like breathed out and then like that long pause for a couple of months and then the bead cruise and who knows. <laughs> Tucson. Yeah. Well, we need to get you on the schedule again right away so it doesn't end up being so long. I totally agree. And I'm ready to, if I don't put things on my calendar, they just don't happen these days, right? How did the bead cruise go? Tell folks about the bead cruise so they can think about going next year. Oh, man, it was so amazing. Um, we really enjoyed, so it's a regular Royal Caribbean cruise every year. So you aren't on like a little cruise ship with just beaters. You're on a huge cruise ship with lots of people. And then you're meeting in a conference center with other beaters for the bead cruise portion. It's, you know, like a retreat inside of the cruise. Mm -hmm. So um, this year we were in the uh, Mexican Riviera on the West coast mm -hmm. and over in your neck of the woods, sort right. of kind of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool. And um, that was my first time flying into LAX. That was my first time being on that side of Mexico. And um, it was the first the time being in Mexico with my husband. LA? What was that? Did the ship leave from LA? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, so it was like we huffed it all the way down to like I, I wouldn't – I certainly did not pay attention to how close. Um, it was Mazatlan and um, – Puerto Vallarta and one other stop. So I didn't quite picture like how close they were to the um, southern border of California, but I would assume not far considering that, you know, you spend time traveling to and from and then stopping three different days. But And then it's a new place every year, right? You don't it is a different place every year. I think after 16 plus years of the big cruise being in existence, they have maybe repeated some ports, but I have not gone to the same place maybe yet once in the four years that I've gone on it. It's been five years since I started doing it, but there was that pause in 2021. So, mm -hmm. so a bead cruise is just what it sounds like. You get on a beautiful cruise ship and you bead with some ex exceptional teachers like Cassandra and uh, learn a few different projects, have a ton of fun together and stop in a few different places. Uh, it sounds pretty fabulous. And I imagine they can find out more about that at beadcruise.com, I think. I am pretty sure they've got that um, URL, but Becky Haley is the organizer. So if you follow her on her social media, she shares lots about the teachers she's got coming up and they rotate out instructors and it's really nice because especially for your audience, I know not everyone's super into seed bead weaving and they work really hard to make sure there's like a good mix of like mixed media as well as stitching and weaving artists. So fun. And it's an annual event every spring. So go somewhere and between now if it's something you're interested in so that you can start planning for spring 2024 or spring 2025. Yeah. Um, so we've got the lovely Cassandra here. She is the owner of Beads to Live By in Michigan. And uh, she has a fantastic project that she's going to be showing us here today. You can kind <clears> of <throat> see it there on the screen. Whoa. Is that a necklace? It is. I um, oh, did that. Fun trick that we probably all do once in a while where I just took a shot of it without the chain, where the chain would be showing. So I just have to attach it to some chain there. But Or just use the soft flex if you want it up the back end. Yeah, well. yeah. I think my, my colors I'm working in today, I'll flash those on the screen here. I think that this would be really fun with just the soft flex up the sides too because I'm using that periwinkle. Um, Gosh, what color is this? I don't see it on the, you'll be able to tell me. Tanzanite? Tanzanite. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are that my That is colors. one of my favorite color mix is, is like an orange or a citrine color with a purple amethyst. It's so pretty. It's like an unexpected combination um, that just 
is so, so gorgeous. Yeah, awesome. yellow and purple are complementary colors on the color wheel. So they mm -hmm. always work really well together. And then I really like mixing like this is more of like a periwinkle color or like almost mm -hmm. sapphire, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, bringing in like more of an orange or topaz with that. I feel like the contrast is really nice and gives it some dimension. That is lovely. Okay. We've got a lot of friends here. Um, let's see. Sherry's saying that it reminds her of the color of irises, which I love irises. Definitely. And I see a lot of people just saying hi. I see Becky and hi, Sherry hi. and Maria and Sheila. She mentioned the place you maybe missed was Cabo San Lucas. <laughs> Sheila slash bead mom is my mother. And she's um, always there to catch uh, my slip ups when I'm not remembering things. So helpful. <laughs> So good to see all of you guys today. I see some people are tuning in from YouTube and then I see some friends are tuning in from Facebook. We're streaming both places and welcome uh, to all of you. And this video will be available for replay after. So if you uh, find that you want a slower version uh, than what Cassandra is doing today, you can always replay it and pause it add your beads and then re and keep going. So, and all of our videos are like that guys. If you need a little more time, just replay it and you can pause it simple and easy. Um, I am going to be gone next week, Cassandra. I'm going to craftcation. Have you oh, heard of that? I have not. That sounds like an amazing trip. Yeah, we're going, Kristen's flying in and we are road tripping down to Ventura, California. And we're doing a week, com or well, almost a week. I think it's like a five day conference of crafting and it's going to be amazing. And I'm <laughs> super excited about it. Um, so next Wednesday, I will not have a video because I will be craftcationing. I do think we have a live sale possibly on Tuesday before I leave though. So we'll have to look on the calendar. Damien, maybe you can take a look on the calendar and see if that's true or not. Um, or Thomas. And, uh, I, yeah, I won't have a Wednesday video, but I will be available next week for the great beat extravaganza which we will have our preview night on Friday, and then we'll have our video. Kristen and I will be together for the first time ever for a great beat extravaganza. We'll physically be together uh, for our video at one o'clock on Saturday. So I hope you guys will join us. Make sure you join that group in order to participate. Um, yeah, it's gonna be, it's a fun couple weeks. I'm very excited to be in my craft head and out of my procurement head. <laughs> well, and I was gonna say, it sounds like um, a tiny break from your teacher role might be nice yes. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love homeschooling, but you definitely need breaks. Um, and the kids need breaks too. I really think there's something to that round year schooling where you do maybe eight weeks on, four weeks off or something. Um, I think you just, we all need mental breaks when it comes to learning, especially um, yeah. just like jamming information in constantly is really tough. So um, it'll be a nice little break for them too, where they can relax a little bit and get ready <laughs> for the end of the school year. Let's see. We've got a few things here. Lorena says, nice to see Cassandra and Sarah. I've never heard of all these crafting vacations and cruises. Where have I been? I know they're the best. You have to try one. Um, definitely worth looking into. Oh, Robin, I'll definitely say a little prayer um, for your city of Louisville. And for I mean, sure. so many cities are affected by things right now. Um, I've also been watching the stuff in Tennessee. So, you know, sending, I am definitely sending prayers out for all of you. Okay, let's get moving. Cassandra, I'm going to highlight your screen. Ah, it's all me. <laughs> so I promise you guys will um, 
have a nice easy go of it today because even if you're following along right now, you are going to have a very repetitive task because these little components that I am making to dangle are like quick and easy and then just a handful of those and then you're just stringing those with a few other beads. But um, let's talk about the supplies just a little bit because we haven't touched on that yet. The combination of seed beads I'm working with tonight and that were in the other project as well as the two hole beads are part of our curated collections. And they are a set of um, either seed beads or two hole glass check beads that you can sign up for and receive in a delivery every month. And in this necklace, I'm very proud to say that I was able to use four out of the five strands of the check glass two hole beads, which I just felt like was a huge accomplishment <laughs> to mix them all into something like that. But um, that is yeah. pretty good. So then you know, I'm realizing I have one of your bead mixes that you sent me not too long ago. And I think I have almost all of the beads to make this design. I was going to say, and I apologize if you want me to exit my um, iPad view while you're on my um, hands, it's going to kick us out, I think. Oh, is it? Of okay. that. Well, where's of your that volume? Oh, and your volume's coming from there too. So that should be fine. Yeah. yeah, I'll do that so that you can focus on whatever. Um, okay. So look at you what need device, to I have those little dangles. I have the little two hole pyramid shape and then i've got this two hole um i don't know what these are called but <laughs> whatever they're called they're lovely those are silky and beads silky beads yes i've got those and i think those are the three things you're using and then i can probably supplement for other things right oh you've got the lentil too there oh this one here that's the um i don't know if you can see my screen but that's the top component on the Okay. I'm switching back to you. Okay. So, yep, there's a there's a lentil bead at the top. Yeah. And then that's how you dangle your component. And then there's two colors of seed beads cuz I like to add an accent color at the bottom. So and the only oh. thing you don't have which you could you could also um supplement a seed bead in, in here. This is a 3 millimeter fire polish. Okay. I'll just but, do seed I mean you got all sorts of things there. Back. Yeah. <laughs> and then the stud or the pyramid is the one that looks like the little pointy stud okay. from like, if you are familiar with like a piece of clothing having a little like metal component on it that sticks out, I think that's where that gets the name from. But those silky beads. Oh, I cannot even believe it. That was just fate because <laughs> I did not look ahead at all. <laughs> yeah, and for anyone who is kind of a little bit behind on the project, there's um, a supply list listed in the event for um, that Softbox created for the video tonight. So you could go get the like, sometimes I know saying like a list out loud or listening to a list out loud versus like seeing it in black and white is not as easy for some folks so we all learn in different ways don't exactly yeah very true and i caught myself like oh about maybe a foot and a half of my softlux to start and again this is the medium i've got the um tanzanite color here but you could use anything as long as it's the medium weight just for the sake of your um, crimp bead ending that you do. And I cut that foot and a half, but then I leave myself, you know, there's there's extra space. And so I work off center from the, the cord and I'll explain that more when I'm crimping and cutting, but your start is gonna be, I like to work as if I still have a center, if that makes sense. So like I, I work off of both ends of the cord still. So I've got one lentil and you only go through the one hole on that lentil. So the other hole is going to be how you hang this from your necklace. And then we've got two beads. What was that? 
This is such a fun way to intermix two whole beads. Oh, thank you. I was really excited about it. I was really inspired by a piece of costume jewelry that I saw and it was like a metal necklace that had like pre-made, um, you know, probably silver components. So it was like not at all beaded per se, but mm -hmm. um, it was just like the shape of it and the way the little like dangly stabby sort of shapes hung off the <laughs> rest of the necklace. Let me see what you have so far. Okay, so, so two bundle, seed beads on each side. And then, yep, size 11 seed beads. I've got two on each side. And again, I'm working with, I've got probably about an inch and a half of my cord on one side and then the rest is hanging off the other. And your, your two hole beads, the, the pyramids or studs definitely have a top and bottom, but the beads like the silkies, sometimes the finish is different on two sides. Mm. So, or, you know, on either side. So you'll want to pay a little bit of attention to that. If you care about the color, you know, that much is, you know, you want to, Mm -hmm. show one side versus the other because these components are one-sided because of those stud beads and the fire polish we um for these subscriptions that people can sign up for every month with the seed beads and the two hole beads we also sell bundles of fire polish and pressed glass that we coordinate to go specifically with each month's subscriptions and our subscribers can actually add those to their shipment the last week before the renewal date and don't have to pay any extra shipping. So like these three millimeter fire polish, you could get a um, coordinating color in a bundle directly for the month that you're, you know, working in. So um, the one that I'm using right now from, you know, a previous month, does that stay available? Are they able to go back and purchase a bundle? Yeah, before? absolutely. So while supplies last, of course, but the, the two whole beads are available to reorder individually. And actually the colors you're working with, Sarah, are from January. And I also did special bundles where people can order all five strands right now. Mm. Um, you know, we have maybe a dozen or so left that people can order at the subscription price. So bundled all of these beads for the subscriptions are a, a good deal. You get like a price break, but, um, normally you wouldn't get that outside of subscribing to those, um, ahead of time. And with, I think January, February, and maybe March. So the colors I'm working in right now, even people can order sets of the two whole beads and the seed beads at the subscription price of um, $17.99 or $18.99, depending on which product you're talking about. How many seed beads are you putting on right now? So I've got just those first two on either side above the silky next to the mm -hmm. lentil. And then I would guess you might need two on each side between your silky and your pyramid or your stud. Oh, I found a four millimeter that works. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I've got three more with an accent color on either side and the, the bottom there. Yeah. And again, just to remind people, you have a back because of that stud. So this side of my silky is not going to show. And my more transparent, like topazy side is going to be the side that shows. And then... Oh, Sarah, I'm always embarrassed to do my ravioli in front of you, but I'm going oh, to. <laughs> You'll be fine. So much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Kristen and says then, she loves that your nails are matching your wire today. She loves a matching video. Kristen, <laughs> it was an accident the first time I did it with you guys, and I have not been able to stop that. <laughs> Some people are loving this colorway. Um, there's a suggestion, champagne color soft flex would look great with these colors. And when you change the color of the wire, it really does change the look of it, too, which is a lot of fun to play around with. Absolutely. It's funny that Becky suggested that because I totally had the champagne and 
than the regular metallic, um, like copper color out oh. as options. Mm -hmm. So fun. once you, once you get your component beads at, um, added to your softlex, I've got both strands going through my crimp bead. And then you just have to really like give the beads like from the top, move towards the top, but then work your way down and push those beads up. Because what can happen is like your base um, of the component, the strands can like kind of tilt and cause the, the bottom to sit off center. So you just want to try to avoid that a little bit. I, I had it happen on like one or two components on my previous uh, sample. So yeah, that makes sense. They ship it's such a delicate, don't you think there's like such little fine tuning things that you pay attention to when you're using such a simplistic design, Sarah? Mm hmm. But it makes it work. Yeah. And then the last thing I would say is something mm -hmm. I learned from you and Kristen is that people can absolutely trim their, um, Softlex right at the base of that crimp bead, and then you don't have any pieces like up, hanging off the end. I really love the look of like having that extra um, color or just the yeah. style of it showing. So I cut my strands on an angle so that there's some interest with like not having the same length on both strands. Love that. It looks like a little tassel to me, which. If anyone has paid attention to the last uh, few years of my videos, I love a good tassel. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot get enough tassel. I have to show you how this turned out. It's so cute. I haven't done this with those colors yet, Sarah. I'm super. Oh, yes. It's cute. That's fantastic. So uh, springy. It's yes, so that's springy. how I felt about mine, but yours is nice and bright, too. Mm. Major spring vibes. And those like saturated color fire polish are really good with it. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll talk through this next component again, just to give people like the whole like start to finish. And then I've actually got another trip coming up that I'd love to chat about while we're like making our extra components. Ooh, okay. Lead into that. <laughs> I think I know what it is. And I'm I, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> but we so, haven't actually talked about it, but I have a feeling I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've got my size 11 seed beads on either side of my lentil. And these guys are a little bit like harder to see because they're a silver lined color. But those are um, two on each side. And then I've got my ends lined up and I'm going to attach my... Um, silky bead it was so funny I did a video with Neele and was using the silky bead and he like we hadn't talked about the beads ahead of time oh, and no. just I yep. said <laughs> this is a silky bead and he's like oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> I was like of course it is it's perfect for silver silk how did you miss the silky beads? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That is kind of funny. I didn't I didn't give him as hard, hard of a time as I should have. I got to spend so much time with him in Tucson, and then we have barely talked since because we're so busy. I so, know. I, that's somebody else that I've hardly chatted with either, and he and I have not done a video together in quite a while. Oh, maybe we'll have to do a trio video. Ooh, I'm I'm ready. One of these days. I love using your guys' products together. It feels very natural for some reason. I know. It's, I, you know, we're such good friends. I feel like that's solidified the combination. Yeah. Although the materials themselves do work well together. It does help that we've done so many different videos and things. Right, for sure. So then after we get that silky on and get that nice and... Um, nestled, you know, we're, we're adding these extra like seed beads and fire polish at either side of the silky because it is set on an angle. So like you've got those points that come out in the center between your strands and it's just good to have something to like flank that part of the bead. 
And then again, just paying attention to top and bottom with our stud bead. We'll slide that puppy down. And then the last thing is three seed beads on each side of our soft flex cord. And my, you're talking about your table being a mess, Sarah, before the video started. My oh tray has quickly become a disaster area. <laughs> beating yeah <laughs> yeah exactly right <laughs> i've never left a beating project without some sort of mess to clean up oh true confessions i've got um so many different work trays that i've collected over the years because we've carried so many different kinds in the shop i actually have ones from the shop that i used to work at before we opened our own that have just held up really well, but I've got like a space in my like storage at home where I have an area that I can stack a bunch of them with like the half finished projects. Oh my gosh. I know. It's never ending. I know. No, I was just visiting with um, the co-owner of Softflex, Mike, and he was like, I've got trays of jewelry. I just need them to be crimped. <laughs> so I have to old old stuff that he made years ago that he just oh wow I'm like I can crimp them it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Sheila here I'll call her out she will like complete a super intricate project and then not put a clasp Finish on it up. for a year <laughs> oh. oh I'm like, so if I've got I those... just finish it in one sitting, then it's probably a problem. So I try to pick projects that I can do pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good call. So after you get those last seed beads on each side of your cord, you're going to shimmy a crimp bead onto both of your ends here. And then that's when you got to really work your mojo to get everything to line up the way that it should how often is the store open right now so our in-person hours are wednesday through saturday and then i um teach outside of that usually like on a sunday or a saturday night and um there's you know usually a day or two in there with like order fulfillment that happens sometimes off the, the in-person hours. So it really, it works out pretty perfectly. Our downtown is not a large downtown. It's not tiny, but mm -hmm. um, we have enough walking traffic that it's good to be open a handful of days in person. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, our customers, I, I try to, you know, keep those like weekend and weekday hours, you know, just a good balance for everybody. That's and then I good. just crimped that bead and trimmed my cords with their little offset tassel -y look there. But I have a great earring idea too. We'll see how uh, far I come along with the necklace and uh, might throw, throw that idea into the mix depending on the circumstances. But how's... Um, I'll chit chat about the trip for a minute, Sarah, if you want to show us how, how you're coming along. Okay. Um, well, first, how many of these are we making? So on the sample, I did seven. You're probably almost done, aren't you? <laughs> no, three. I oh, okay. Three. <laughs> I've got three, too. I so I did seven on mine. Maybe, maybe I'll do five and see how that goes. Yeah. It's looking super cute, though. I love this little color. I really love your colors. It looks great. So I'll make one of these while you chat about the, the trip coming up. Tell us all about it. Awesome. So um, because we're working with like all the Czech glass, I was like, oh, yeah, I would, it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that um, right. coming up this October, I am traveling with our good friend, John, to the Czech Republic and specifically to Prague and then Yablonets where the beads are manufactured yeah. and we're leading a group of beaters who will get to explore and sightsee in Prague and then 
um, get to tour and shop at the bead factories where I actually purchased my beads at for our store and our website. It's like a dream trip. It is. I've, I've now done it once before and I'll be teaching this time. And my other good friend Kinga Nichols is going to be joining us and teaching several classes. And um, she does classes are available if you go on the trip. So you can do up to five beading classes. The price of the trip does include two of them um, just as part of the trip. Mm. But I think you can take like you know, all five if you want to. <laughs> oh. yeah. But it's such an amazing experience, both because of the beat aspect. And um, I've, I've visited a lot of places in Europe and other parts of the world. And Prague is such a magical, wonderful city. And everything's so reasonable. I mean, there's a lot of things included in the trip as far as meals and whatnot are concerned but then anything you're purchasing outside of the included experience is like such a minimal cost compared to other parts of Europe or even the U.S. it's like a really reasonable affordable place to be and and considering the quality of like the food and um, they have delicious wine for those that are um, that enjoy that type of thing <laughs> I mean, I understand that's not for everyone, but it's um, definitely something worth noting or beer. My, my husband has never stopped talking about the beer since the first time we went. <laughs> <laughs> Will he be going with you this time? He is going to return with me. I, I, in good conscience for two reasons, could not go without him. Um, number one, because that was like one of his favorite trips we've ever taken. Mm -hmm. And we also, um, this year, will be in Yablonets right on our 15th uh, wedding anniversary. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be tricky. I would be kind of the worst wife ever if I went without it. <laughs> <laughs> so true. What a beautiful way to celebrate your anniversary. I know it's like a work trip, but there's going to be lots of fun downtime. And um, we love exploring places like that together. So it's going to be an extra special um, year for sure. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. So how do people find out more about it? So I was um, not thinking ahead and did not send you guys a link to the website, which is a little bit more involved anyways, as far as the name goes. But if people go to our website, to the homepage, that um, trip, there's an image front and center right there on the homepage. And I would be more than happy to... Um, like if they click on on that from our homepage, they can there there's the little pop up. Um, they and they can link right to there. the website for the trip. Did Thomas put? Oh, there it is. Yeah, they did. Yeah. I'm beating, so I'm like, oh wait, am I supposed to do something? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Thomas has been such a help these last couple weeks when we have been shorthanded. I have never felt more blessed to have my lifelong co-workers help. He's been really fantastic. So shout that out. Seems like a wonderful person to begin with. So that doesn't surprise me that they've mm. been uh, stepping it up a notch to help you out either. Yeah, no, everybody. I mean, it's not just Thomas, but Thomas has gone above and beyond the last couple weeks really helping. So I really, 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 really appreciate him right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can sit next to me on the plane next time, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> we used to travel with each other so much, like so much that we would sit separate on the airplane. So we're like, oh, my we gosh, just to like have some downtime. Yeah. And just, well, we just didn't like, we'd sit next to each other sometimes too. But if it, if it, if we couldn't, we weren't like, oh man, we can't sit by each other. We're like, oh, we see each other all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. I'm going to come back to you so that we can see how you put the necklace together. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds perfect. I'm working on my like um, fifth piece. So I will 
finish this one off and then um, string up one side of the necklace and get it, get it going. Well, this is so cute and just like the perfect kind of project for me coming back from spring break. Good, good. I didn't want to tax anybody too much, you know? <laughs> And of course, like it was just meant, meant to be. I had all these beads almost entirely on my bead table. So that's crazy. Kismet, right? Right. I so saw that you guys had a fun um, like neighbor or neighborhood Easter egg hunt this uh, last yeah. weekend. Is that right? Yeah, we have a really great little family that lives behind us. We have like a paved alley that's private. And, oh, fun. Um, so there's some houses right behind us, and that's where everybody parks. So we end up actually seeing our neighbors behind us more than our neighbors in front sometimes. <laughs> that's so funny. We all come and go, you know, and that's where our gardens are too. Yeah. Um, most of us have little garden boxes back there by our driveways. So we have a couple of girls that live across the, the alleyway from us and we've been good friends with them now since we moved here. Um, I think it's been five years now. So we did a yard exchange. So they hid eggs in their yard and all the kids found eggs over there. And then they came over to our yard and uh, found eggs over here too. So they got a double, double egg hunt. Um, out of it which was fun that is too funny more exciting you know you're in someone else's yard like hunting eggs it's not the same thing you've done every year yeah that's awesome it, it sounds like a blast it was making me have memories of when I was a kid and like in grade school still we visited my aunt in um she lived in Georgia at the time and I don't think too far outside of Atlanta because we went into Atlanta and spent at least one day there, but um, we, it was around Easter. So we had this big Easter egg hunt in her big backyard in Georgia that we had never been in before. So it was like, we were getting to explore something new for the first time. <laughs> Shadow finished her treat and now she's like attacking me to pet her. <laughs> oh, that sounds very familiar. You and I have been going through the puppy stages together oh. recently. Oh. And actually, wow. Little Miss <laughs> Waffles is getting her big girl surgery tomorrow. So Oh, that's a big one. We had we went through that. Yeah. She's so I got a piece of chain here and I'm just going to like leave it long. I think I've got like 18 inches there so that I can adjust it according to what I do in the front of the necklace after the fact. And then I've got a crimp bead on and I'm going to go through the chain and then back through that crimp bead. And I switched over to my metallic copper um, medium soft flex because for the stringing at the top, you're not going to see a lot of the um, soft flex wire. And I figured I'd save my really pretty tanzanite for when there's going to be more showing maybe. I'm just going to get this crimp bead close to my chain and then grab that. I don't know. Making the raviolis is not as scary when you do them over and over again. Rapid fire, Sarah. <laughs> it's a really good pattern for practice. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, definitely. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this nub off because I think it's going to kind of get in our way for the stringing. And then I've got like a foot or less of wire threaded here and this is where one more bead makes its uh, appearance or its debut and these are the daggers from the march set they are just spectacularly copper and metallic and beautiful and this is the only bead that you're not utilizing both of the two holes so if you have a beautiful single hole dagger that you need to use or need in your life and want to use in this project, 
it would work because we're only stringing through the top hole of this uh, particular bead here. Oh, and I'm throwing beads off my tray with my wire. So the, the stringing pattern that I used was just getting those three millimeters in between the different um, components and daggers one at a time so that they were, um, they had a little breathing room. So I'm gonna start with a three millimeter and then go through. And when you're stringing these components, you wanna continue to be mindful of your top or bottom, front or back of the component because you wanna make sure they're all going on the same direction for the sake of when you are done and wearing it. <laughs> But then after the component, I've got another three millimeter. And then again, we're just using the top hole for now on that dagger. And then, so every other bead is a three millimeter. And then you stagger your um, components and you're using the top hole, that empty hole of your lentil in between. And then don't forget to go back to your dagger in between the components I'm here. Sarah, I just had to go remove her. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Sarah. Like I said, yes. you and I, I totally get it. She's like, play with me. Play with me. Play with me. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm obviously busy, Shadow. <laughs> obviously. How old is Shadow now? She's one. Okay. Yeah. Waffles is coming up on six months and she goes through spurts where the, her energy level is like, oh my gosh, how, how is this happening? What is happening? And then like, she'll get quiet and lovey. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, we can make it through this puppy stage. I have faith. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Yeah. She, she's, you know, like any, any one-year-old dog, she has energy and she's really, um, a people dog. She likes yeah all the time. So if I'm the only one here, then she's like, well, you're obviously the one who needs to be giving me my attention right now. Right. <laughs> Where she also, I don't know if you feel this way. You've seen pictures of waffles. I feel like they have very similar facial features, like not the same coloring at all. And they obviously are very different sizes, but. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, she's a labradoodle. Does waffle waffles have some labradoodle in her? She doesn't. It's so funny that um, it. She looked like she had a little terrier in her face, um, shadow, but yeah, waffles is like terrier and chihuahua and probably like some other like forms of muddiness on waffles end. From you guys, this is even better than I imagined. Mm -hmm. Yum. From what I understand from um, the previous owners, she's like a first generation Labradoodle. So okay. Mom was a was a lab, and her dad was a poodle, and um, so she definitely is interesting because she's very lab like, but then she does these things like spring straight up in the air, and I'm like, oh, there is the poodle, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there it is, clearly. Thankfully, she's settling in because it's always tricky. Well, and bringing your dog, bringing a dog into the house, even if they're not a puppy, is a big adjustment for them and for you. I mean, like we we went through that and continue to go through that with Walter a little bit, and especially then making a change of having another dog. Walter is the older dog, right? Yes, Walter is like maybe just over two years old from what they can guess. He was a rescue, cool. so he was in a he was puppy older. mill. 
really bad situation before he went to the rescue that he was at for maybe six months. And then he came to us. So is he opening up a lot more now? He really is. He's um, super, <laughs> he, he like will engage with his sister and like in ways that are just so funny and surprising because he's so timid with us. But then if he gets in a playful mood, he'll like, gnaw on her and like give like little not um, ag aggressive growls but like yeah it, so it sounds like he's snarling a little bit but it's like all just like really gentle play and it's it's just the cutest thing <laughs> it's so pretty or like beautiful when a dog can open up you know oh you yeah know? especially when you think of like the situations they may have come out of if they were in like an abusive or hoarding mm -hmm. type of situation like he was it's like I, I can't imagine the strength that must take a creature, you know, who's not a human who we can't communicate with to an extent. It's, it'll be a year in May since we got him. And I am continuing to give him every ounce of like empathy I can, because I know that, you know, it's just going to be a lot of time for him to like fully trust us and, and to not see humans, I think is scary or negative creatures in general too mm -hmm. so will he climb in your lap or any of that or is he still too timid for that he's still too timid for a climb into the lap although he does like nestle up next to me if we're on the couch or um and that's just very recent and he nice. um pre what was that that's really good yeah, yeah. And previously, he has been doing that for months. If I go sit on the floor, if I take a blanket and sit like in a kind of enclosed space, like our um, the end of our hallway near our bedroom, it's like he has felt safe there for a while and will let me scratch him and even will like lay down and rest to an extent more than he does anywhere else. But um, yeah, that the couch is like just the last couple of weeks, he's been jumping up there um usually just to escape waffles but then they end up playing sometimes <laughs> he's like okay please please help me this dot this puppy is yes i've been telling him for months that he could escape her that way because she wasn't jumping up on the furniture on her own and then it seemed like right about the time that she started doing it he decided that like that was okay for him and maybe he's just like mimicking her behavior too but Mm-hmm. Oh, this is so cute. Now I just have to find the right clasp here somewhere. Are you gonna do just the five as a completed necklace, Sarah? I think so. It'll be really sweet and cute. I like that idea. Let's see what I have for clasps. Since I did not plan ahead. <laughs> There's just no time for planning ahead anymore. <laughs> nope, I can appreciate that. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That'll look good. How's it looking over there? Let me see. I am like done with my sixth component. I mean, really the other end of the um the crimp bead and the wire is a pretty, you know, simple thing that your customers mm -hmm. all know how to do as far as just like a simple crimp, but. Right. Still good to show a little bit just so that. They oh yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm happy to keep beating. I just don't want to, I know you've got another fun event coming up tonight too, don't you? Yeah, we've started doing a, uh, Zooms with those who have purchased our kit. So it is uh, only available to anyone who bought a kit. You get a link through the email and you get to join me live at 4.30 today. And we just kind of hang out, like break out our kit beads, chat about what we've been up to. And it's really nice. Um, you know, some turn their cameras on, some don't. But it's just nice to be able to chit chat uh, in a more <laughs> um, back and forth manner than reading comments and chit chatting <laughs> my video. And I 
get to get it, things, which is always really fun too. So it's been really lovely. It sounds wonderful. And I like the idea as you were sitting here talking about like people who bought the kit um, are the ones that get to participate in this. I mm -hmm. thought it'd be really fun. I could incorporate some of that into some of our things that we do in our subscriptions. Totally. Um, speaking of people getting benefits out of things, um, I can pull out the code. Did you happen to see that um, last email I threw out there about the um, little discount I wanted to give our viewers tonight? Yeah, go for it. I would love that. You guys, Cassandra has put, a, put together a special deal just for you. So listen closely. Yeah. So if... Anyone who's watching the video tonight would like to, um, if you're looking at some things on our website, if you make a purchase between now and um, Friday at the end of the day, anytime during that time, and it's at least a $25, $25 purchase, your um, coupon code of softflex10 will get you 10% off of your order. And that includes anything on the website with the exception of the um, subscriptions. So you can order the past subscriptions with that code and get the discount. You just can't sign up for future subscriptions. But if you order six months of the subscriptions at a time, you get 10% off anyway. So really like you can, you can take advantage of it all if you want to. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. That was just my little, you know, I don't know if I've done that outside of like the customer appreciation week or things like that. So I thought, you know, we've been really busy the last couple of weeks and I know we have a lot of overlapping customers. It's another little way to like throw a thank you out there, especially since I'm out here tempting you guys with like additional <laughs> beady goodies. <laughs> hey, I got to show you guys what I just did so you don't do what I did. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this. I I did uh, oh, yeah. daggers on this side, but I did not do it on this side. I don't know what I was thinking. I think I like it better. I have it upside down too. It's funny that you did that, Sarah, because I did not start with a dagger and I was looking at my necklace thinking I kind of wanted to start with a dagger. Yeah. So I guess you can see which way you like it better. <laughs> <laughs> But maybe not uh, together. <laughs> you did it on purpose for me. You can say that. <laughs> I was being really super helpful. And <laughs> I did line up a little bit more too. I did one of those fire polish with a seed bead in between each. Nice. I see that now. A little change you can make if you want to just, I don't know, give them a little more space. I yeah. like that. Sandra's look too. I honestly just started beating without really thinking about what she put between them. So that's what I ended up doing. But they, I think it looks good either way. The other thing I would throw out there to people is I, um, the, the piece that I originally derived my inspiration from was like top to bottom these components would be strung like all the way along the necklace mm. and it would be labor intensive. But if you had like a special event or if you were doing like metallic colors that you could wear more often, mm -hmm. I can totally see it being worth like the effort to get the look of what you would end up with. I love everybody always loves to help me when I make a mistake. I love your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. It says, remove the crimp and float those three beads to the back of the necklace. Good thinking. Oh, yeah. It, I'm good with it right now. So one thing I wanted to point out is that um, we haven't done a lot of talking about the spring summer quad. I have Ooh. seen you guys ordering it, though. So these are some of the most popular colors to use this spring, and they're really fantastic together. Um, and so I used the pink tourmaline from this set, but if you get the set, uh, you'll get dark blue lapis, tanzanite, which is what Cassandra was using today, 
the spinel, which I think is super close to the Viva Magenta color of the year. And then the pink tourmaline all in one beautiful set. So you can find that on the website now. We're also, uh, we have all of our tools on sale. So the magical crimpers, cutters, we just restocked everything. And you can find that sale with no coupon necessary at softlexcompany.com. How's it looking over here? Oh, it's so pretty with that copper chain. Is that copper? It is. And this is a Tira cast chain that we carry at the store. I don't have it listed on the website, but I have a good amount of it. If somebody wanted that to coordinate with their um, set of beads, they could just message me and I could add it, you know, separately to their order. But um, I was just giggling to myself thinking I'd love to be able to claim that I was so on top of things that I you know, planned out using one of your quad colors in my project with the <laughs> tanzanite, but They're that was just, just like popular colors for spring. So yep. you're gonna automatically probably, you know, go for them. More more kismet happening here. <laughs> right, exactly. I'm, I'm loving the copper with the purple and the citrine and the tanzanite color. It's all coming together so beautifully. Thank you. I'm also embarrassed to say I'm pulling out some crimp covers because I do not see um, where I have left myself any um, more copper crimp beads after I got through those last uh, components. Oh, you used them all. <laughs> it's okay. We'll, we'll throw the work. crimp covers over there. Make it work. Yeah. So for those who don't know what a crimp cover is, can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely. I wasn't sure. Is it something that you folks carry? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I can never remember it's when my findings, too, right? When my findings are just like in a pile, you know, I can never remember where they're from. So I don't ever want to assume. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. We carry this. Yep. So this is, it's um, a three millimeter. So it goes over, of course, I just dropped the one. It goes over those um, two by two crimp beads really nicely and easily. Um, it looks like a little C when you are looking at it open. So this is the way they come to you. And then my like, it might not be a trick, but like the, the trick I've been um, kind of taught over the years is I actually lay it on my tray upside down and then I let my crimp bead fall into it. And then when I pick it up, I've got it nestled in there. I haven't seen it done that way before. And then when I hold that up that way, I can use my um, flat nose or chain nose pliers and just give it a good squeeze. And I usually go so that there's still like a too big of an opening to leave it that way. And then I start squeezing so that I'm hitting the edge more than I am the sides. Cause then I can make more of a ball with it that way. Mm -hmm. That looks really good. It just looks like a giant um, magic Wait. crimped bead, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it actually looks really good on the ends there with the chain. Cause the chain is a little bit larger. Yep, it gives it a nice finished look, even though the crimp, um, the magic crimping is a great, you know, option too. I think this one is also equally lovely technique to stick mm -hmm. in there. So I've just got like a random crimp bead on this end. <laughs> Since I'm going to cover it up anyways, um, I would say the other thing to remember when you're using especially that um, print cover is when you are finishing your second side and all your beads are on there already, you do have to leave a little bit of um, wiggle room on each side of the crimp so that your cover can go around it without, um, you know, like, basically you can, you can crimp your your crimp bead and not have enough room beside where the beads are mm. to actually place your cover there. So you have to like leave a little bit of space there. Mm -hmm. Space is always good because you want your beads to be able to move a little bit and that allows the wire to be flexible. Exactly. So if you make it too tight, then 
it will not wear as nicely as it otherwise would. Yeah, so I've got that crimped. A little bit of space there, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're, yes, wiggle room. That's what we often call it. Leave yourself some wiggle room. Those beads need to wiggle. Yes, they. you want them to look natural and not um, stiff. Mm-hmm. Doing a crimp cover on a video is um, pro level demonstrating. <laughs> As if yeah. I was not already like almost shaking over here. It's really you know, tricky because they're tiny and they slip and slide really easily. So it's hard enough to do them without a camera, but then to do them on camera is always challenging. Um, I could not agree more. And honestly, Sarah, you know, I was already laughing about like my lack of prowess with the um magic crimper <laughs> so it's a little shocking to me that then i had to go and utilize one of those suckers <laughs> what is this plate i wanted to ask you at the beginning it's so pretty so this is from a local shop in jackson that's like a block and a half away from my business and i bought it a couple years ago so they probably don't carry this exact thing anymore but it's called rustic market and we have so many cute little retail shops downtown um, where we are located, but this is a plate that I got there and it had a B for beads and I've had it sitting in the store and haven't been using it for um, displaying anything significant. And I keep seeing all these beautiful um, kind of posed photos with people's mm -hmm. products and, you know, really pretty things underneath of them. And I'm constantly like kind of going back and forth between wanting to have something attractive in my photos with the projects or with the beads, but also not wanting the background to be too busy. So I finally just like sucked it up and said, you know, I'm just going to like Give play around try. with like the things that I have on hand and just see how I feel about it. But yeah, it's fun, isn't it? It's really cute. Will you bring it up closer so we can see the necklace? Absolutely. Look at how pretty that turned out, everybody. If you love this design, please give a heart or a thumbs up, depending on where you're watching, and let Cassandra know how grateful you are for this fun and easy tutorial. Um, I will be giving you a thumbs up because I enjoyed making this today. It's like the perfect project for just when you don't need to do too much thinking but you get something that does sort of look kind of complicated and special. Um, it's really, really great, really good. Yeah. Start to finish you guys under an hour. And that's with us like casually chit chatting and fumbling. through things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so cool. I think the, the time investment is minimal and just using touches like using a good chain or using a really pretty soft box color on the edges and the crimp beads or crimp covers, you know, being done well makes such a difference in how something simple like this can turn out. For sure. Yeah. Thank you. I see all those lovely comments and lots of hearts and thumbs up coming our way. Um, and you have done such a good job today, Cassandra. Everyone is very excited about this project. Thank you so much. Um, should I try to rejoin for a little chit chat with uh, sure. the thank you? Yeah, why don't you do that? And I'll work on um, just giving a little parting news. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to be back for a live sale on Tuesday. Did anybody check on that for me? Thomas, do we have a live sale next Tuesday already? I feel like we do. Tuesday the 18th is a, a Mike live sale. So we will be sharing products from Mike Sherman's um, bead stash. And it's going to be a ton of fun. So join me at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time on Tuesday the 18th. There's probably an event created already where you can go and click to go to the event and it'll help give you a notification when it happens. Um, I'll go check and make sure after this, if I have time. 
<laughs> that it's there. Um, but yes, I hope you'll join me next Tuesday. I will be gone on Wednesday, um, Wednesday to Monday. So Kristen will be gone the following Monday and we'll be at Craftcation, but we will be posting all sorts of pictures of our shenanigans. Um, we have like very cool classes planned. Uh, I'm really excited. Um, I'm taking a class from Jen Perkins. I know I'm doing a, a seed bead weaving class. Um, like a fringe earring. It'll, it's not a really hard seed beading project, but it's definitely something I don't normally get to do. So I'm excited about that. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll post pictures and take you along with us. Make sure you tune in next Friday for um, the preview night for the Great Beat Extravaganza. I believe mm -hmm. it's the 20th. And then on the 21st, you'll find Kristen and I together at 1 p.m. Pacific for the big event. I think our kit sold out. I haven't been on top of everything because I've had so much going on, uh, but I think our kit did sell out. If not, you may go be able to grab a couple now. And I wanted to mention, we have two Viva Magenta um, uh, collections that uh, we found that you can order uh, as of today, hopefully. I was working on it before I came on the live video. I see Thomas just posted a link. So if you missed the Viva Magenta and you were one of the many people who emailed me and said they were sad that they missed it after I opened it, you can go grab that now. It does look like the TGBE kit is sold out, but you can get a head start on Camp Out, which is the next kit that I open on the last Wednesday of this month. Um, we do have some of those left over. I feel like not as many as normal because we did a promo with them. So if you haven't gotten one, don't wait around too long on that one. Um, what can they do to join your subscription, Cassandra? So I think Thomas or somebody magical in the background shared the link. But if they go to our website, there's, yep, um, the, from the homepage, there's a tab across the top. So you're wanting to go to the curated collections. And then there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of product there now because we've had so many months of them already. And we list the previous month's options for purchase and then the bundles that people can add on. But you want to go to the pre-order if you go to either filter or the sidebar menu, um, it'll say example acrosted. It says subscription right in the um, right in the information for the product listing. So that's the thing you're looking for. And you'll see like an option in the drop down menu, whether you want to register for one month or three months or six months at a time. So that's the only place that that will appear is the the subscription part. And if people sign up right now they will get their April delivery. Um, we start shipping those on April 18th and the colors are really lovely. I'm super excited about that set. Cassandra's kind of a color genius. So yeah. if you're looking for a jump off point for your month, I think these subscription boxes are really nice for putting a mixture of colors together that you may not normally use, especially if you use a lot of seed beads. Like if you're doing, you know, peyote stitch and brick stitch and all sorts of different things that are using seed beads, these would just be a fantastic way to uh, keep your palette new and fresh each month. I also think it's a really nice opportunity. Like when I started beading, I always felt like, you know, I only had so many options of things in my stash that I could use. And this is like a nice way to build your stash mm -hmm. with product that's like discounted and already curated and set up color wise for you so that you've got like a nice little collection just to like start working with. Yeah. And then if you do that add on with the check glass beads, you're going to get some bigger beads that you can intermix. So that's what Cassandra used today in her design was that extra bundle that you get that match the seed beads. And that's what I used too. Um, but it was from January. So um, you can kind of get a, an idea. You're going to get different strands of seed beads in lots of different shapes and colors, but even those are going to go together really well because they match that seed bead bundle that she's already put the time and energy in to make uh, really lovely. So it's a good way to check it out. 
Oh man, this has been so much fun. We definitely are going to have to get another date on the calendar so we don't go so long without um, chatting, Sarah. No, totally. I see Deborah corrected me. TGBE Friday the 21st. We will be on Saturday the 22nd. Thank you for that correction. Everybody knows here I cannot keep the calendar straight for my life. <laughs> Oh, if it's not right in front of my face, I'm right there with you, Sarah. I do know I have somewhere to be at 430. And I know some of you have to be there too. So check your email for the Zoom link. And I will see you in just about 13, 17 minutes um, and on Zoom. And we'll have a little chat. And maybe I'll make a pair of earrings to match this lovely necklace that I made with Cassandra. Fun. I will post if I follow through with my earring design idea. I will also post pictures in the VIB yes. group too. Sweet. And make sure you're following Cassandra on her Facebook page and her Instagram page so that you can see more projects from her on a regular basis. But we'll have her back on soon because she's my beating buddy. <laughs> Sarah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you to everyone out there. I know there are so many of you that support both of our companies with like your post likes and your comments and, and your purchases. So thank you for that. We really appreciate you. Absolutely. Please like and share this video and we will see you again. Um, well, many of you I'll see again shortly, uh, but the rest of you, I'll see you Tuesday at 12 p.m. Pacific for our next live sale from Mike Sherman's private collection. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.